Hey guys, Joe Pye here. Welcome back to my shop. I'm going to show you a technique today on how to set a fly cutter to a very specific diameter to make large radial features in your parts. Now you can do this with a CNC, you can do it with a turntable, you can do it with a boring head, but I'm going to show you how to do it with a fly cutter and that is certainly the most primitive way to do it. But I'm going to show you two different ways to do it, one on the machine and one naturally off the machine, but each way is going to be very effective. Now, this particular video is going to be one of several that will tie together overall and help you to complete a project that I'm going to do maybe two or three videos from now. And I'm not going to tell you what the project is, but knowing how to set a fly cutter to a specific diameter is going to be one of the things that will assist you should you care to pursue or attempt anything like I will show you about two or three videos from now. It's going to end up on a turntable on a mill and having a cutter that's a specific diameter is going to work out. Uh, it's going to be very helpful. Anyway, let's take a walk out to the mill. I'll show you how to set up a fly cutter to set a precision diameter, and I think you're going to like what you see. If you've ever had a job that required a nice round cutout in a part, and you didn't feel like setting up a rotary table, and you didn't have a boring head, well then there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can use a cutter this big, or you can set another tool to cut that radius. When this radius was cut, this tapered feature right there would indicate that it was this way. Actually this way. Anyhow, we're going to set up a fly cutter to do that and I'm going to show you a way that you can precision set up your fly cutter to create scallop features and then I'm going to set this down in the feature to prove it. So let's take a walk over to the mill and I'll show you exactly how that's done. As with any particular machining operation the very first thing that you're going to use is an edge finder. So let's put an edge finder in the machine and locate the edge of a piece of raw stock that's sitting in the machine squared. Having it in there vertical is very important. So you can indicate it, set it up with a machinist square, set it up with a one, two, three block, whatever. But you want the surface that you're going to work with to be truly vertical. So we're going to find this surface right here. We're going to move the machine over and center the center edge finder. And I'll show you how to set that fly cutter. Whenever I find an edge with an edge finder, I will zero my dials or zero my digital and I will always repeat to see if I get the same reading. Just make sure there's no debris or no burrs on your part and you'll be good to go. Move your spindle directly over the edge of your workpiece and zero everything out. Now you install the fly cutter. The piece that I'm looking to make a nest for in this particular operation is 2 inch 506 in diameter. Let's see if we can find it. There it is, 2 inch 506. By knowing that the spindle right now is over the edge of that part, you can use your digital readout, you can use your dials, you can use a drop indicator, whatever, and move the spindle. Let's see if we can do this for you. Move the machine, offset the distance of your radius. So right now what I want to do is I want to move that fly cutter to the left exactly the amount of the radius of the part that I want to cut. I'm looking for 1 inch 253 out. And that is exactly what I have right now. I take the machine out of gear and I'm going to bring the fly cutter down to just above the part and I'm going to look at the projection of the tool against the face of this surface right here. 
I'm going to make sure that it's not beyond that surface. Continue bringing the tool down. While it can still move, gently move the tool out. And adjust it until which time the machine will spin without hitting that face. Without moving the table, tighten the tool up. And see if it spins freely. If it still does, the diameter that you're going to cut in there is going to be too small. You have to have a trace line that runs down the face of this part ever so slightly and you know that you've got your fly cutter set exactly the way you need it because the radius from the center of the spindle distance is set to the radius of your part and when you have a scratch the diameter will be the same. So it might take a couple of seconds to fuss with it but it's going to be worth it so let's see if we can get it in there. I think we're pretty close right there. And I think we're very close. Gotta tighten it up. Gonna sit this block back in there sideways. Now the distance from the spindle to the workpiece doesn't matter anymore because the tool has been set to a hard stop. Let's whittle away at it and see how it fits. Gives you a beautiful finish. And I like that the light is in the back of the machine because we're going to stick this on here and see just what kind of match we have. To me it feels just a hair big because it wiggles. 
let's see. I don't know, I think that's pretty good, guys. Okay, fairly simple process. You saw how it was done. And the more time you take, the closer you will get to being right on. So take your time. No CNC required, no boring head required, just a little bit of patience and a fly cutter. I hope you like that. Another way you can set your fly cutter to a very precision diameter is with a height gauge, a drop indicator, V-block, gauge pin, piece of material, whatever, and knowledge of the diameters that you're trying to achieve. Now by putting a pin or a piece of material or even the shank of your fly cutter in a V-block and zeroing your indicator, you know exactly where the center of that material is. So with this being a 750 diameter pin, I am now 375 from the center of the slug, which also puts me 375 into the re required radius of this fly cutter. Now by subtracting half the diameter of the shank from your final size, that will be the height that you'll look for. Ooh, see that? on your height gauge or your drop indicator to the tip of your tool. And in this particular case I was looking for 878. And make sure you rotate it as you check it because it's going to change. Bigger tip is a better tip. So put that on your uh, height gauge with a nice wide tip on it is the better way to go. Anyway, that is two different ways to set a fly cutter for a precision diameter. And it works very well, either one. Good luck. Okay guys, well those two methods of setting a fly cutter to a precision diameter are very effective. Uh, they will work well naturally if you beat your tool down. As the tool wears, the diameter is going to get smaller, so be very aware of the condition of your tool as you do that. Anyway, very effective way. Uh, it's a great little shortcut, and it yields good results. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can use it. Thank you for watching. Joe Pizinski, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.